Um, I had read that you do carpentry, and mm -hmm. I wondered um, how long you've been doing that and what inspired you to take that up. Well, my father was uh, a builder when I was a kid, so um, I think I, there was a little bit just around. It, um, and I think I sort of just thought, oh, this is what men do. And, uh, and then I just made, that's how I made money when I was in uh, high school and college. And, and, then, uh, and then I demolished an old house and built a new one um, after when I moved to like LA. Um, so, yeah, it was just always something that was going on. Um, I'm, you know, it takes a lot of time to build a bench. So I'm not doing as much of it these days as I used to. Yeah, IKEA, as it turns out, is a great time saver. Really? Yeah. yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. So much for avoiding product placement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I hate IKEA so much. Uh -oh. Yeah. There, reverse product placement. Yeah. I actually like going to IKEA, and if I can go to IKEA, and then I've many times gone in, put a bunch of stuff in the shopping cart, been there for like an hour and a half, and then right before checking out, I just walk away from the cart. And go to my car and I come home having not bought anything and I feel like I've, I've won, but I've done that on a number of occasions. <laughs> Have they banned you yet? that place. <laughs> but oh, sometimes okay. it's Misha, the only yeah. place you can go. And they have really good frozen yogurt. Yeah, and what is the other thing that they have? Cinnamon the meatballs. meatballs. Oh, yeah. But I hate the place. <laughs> but the meatballs are nice. Yes? You have to eat. <laughs> what? No, that wasn't actually my question. Oh, it wasn't? But it's okay. No, no, no. Let's go. The Daily Dragon. How can I? No, no please. No, no, go. we have time for two more questions. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Um, when you go into a situation where you're going to be playing God, and it's a change of a role from the situation that you've been in for a while, how do you change your approach to the character and to the rest of the um, your fellow cast members? Well, um, I think in in, the, in, the, in this case, Castiel went from you know being a conflicted angel to being an angel on a mission, to being God. And I think that he, um, what I tried to do is just bring a little bit more, um, I mean, honestly, just omnipotence and omniscience and just that uh, a, a sort of a more greater gravitas to the character and a greater sense of calm, um, you know, that I would imagine comes with someone who is invincible. Um, and, um, it, it, you mean cast members like Jared and Jensen, or you well, know, no, just in general, your interactions with. I don't, I don't know how you normally approach it when you're performing a role, but do you, like, have you separate? Did you separate yourself from everybody else to sort of get into the headspace of Godhood? Oh fuck no, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, the way it works on Supernatural is you try to say the lines if you can without laughing and if you succeed then they put it in the can and send it down to LA for editing and most of the time you fail because someone is molesting you right out of frame um, it's, <laughs> it's so it's difficult uh, but no no there's no like uh, character work or any of that actor stuff going on um, on the set of Supernatural if anyone caught you doing that you would be ridiculed for years <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's a different vibe. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> she tried not to giggle loudly. <laughs> um, I know that you directed a short film and you produced. Um, is that, have you found that that helps you as an actor to be able to relate to the more technical side um, when you, um, when either on Supernatural or if you own your guest spots or anything? Um. You know what? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I actually think it's the other way around. I think that having done the acting work that I've done has uh, enabled me to think about producing and directing a little bit. But you, as an actor, you do see a, a lot of what's going on in the production. You're sort of right in the middle of it. You don't see pre-production and you don't see post-production. So you don't see, you're not familiarizing yourself so much with location scouting and, and editing. But you do see what works for locations and what doesn't work for locations. And you do see how, how things edit together in the end. So you do have a pretty good 
sort of bird's eye view of a production as an actor. I mean, and I think that that's why a lot of actors do become directors. It's because they, you know, if you're on set day after day, you learn how a production works, and then you are in a position. Honestly, I would never presume to be able to direct anything had I not spent a significant amount of time on set already. Because it's complicated. There's a lot of stuff to think about. Every once in a while, you see a director on the set who has not spent much time on sets, and it's just like deer in a headlight, and they do this. Yeah, you know. I mean, luckily, you know, I mean, if it's a TV show, it doesn't matter that much because the crew knows they've been doing it for you know years, and they know everybody knows how to play their role so well that it works out. It could almost be done without a director. On uh, independent movies, is a total fiasco. Uh, that's a so there you have it. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Got to mm -hmm. <laughs> So we got a few extra minutes. Well, let's. Uh, I was going to. Just photographs. Yes. Let him finish his thing. <laughs> but thank you, guys, for, for thank coming. You. Thank you. I actually have a question. When, if there's time later, um, uh, Buddhism. Oh yeah. Have you ever been to the San Francisco San Francisco Zen Center? No. Because you've been going on the Where is that? It's right outside San Francisco. Um, my, my cousin was actually the director. The Zen Center? No, I haven't. They're really, really nice. Uh, well, yeah. Are you, are, you a, are you a member of the center? No, my cousin Have you is, ever is been? a monk. Oh, really? Yeah. Is there some water? No, I have my phone. Oh, you have a soda there? <laughs> You're especially kidding. No more cameras, you can see that. Yes. <laughs> Nobody will know but us that you like Mountain Dew. I don't like Mountain Dew. That's the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first it was time all I've they had. had a Mountain Dew in you. <laughs> Your minion got the wrong soda. <laughs> Try it. Bad, bad minion. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the prankster on the set? Jared. Jared? <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? Because it surprises no one. My favorite picture is a picture of Jared. He had little baby pigtails in his hair. And you see the little, little material cloth scrunchies. And it's like, like two pieces of hair. Jared is a nightmare. What, what has he done to you that you're like, ah? Oh. He tries to ruin every single close-up. Really? If he's on set, he will, he will fuck with me. And... To such an extent that they've stopped writing scenes with Castiel and Sam in them. <laughs> because it takes three times as long to shoot. Is that the molestation that you were talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. That's funny. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Misha.